Hi there, guys. Welcome back to This Week in WoW, episode three. This week has flown by. I didn't even realize it was Sunday until it was about time to go to bed. And I was like, oh, shoot, I've got to do my web series. So here we are. Um, this week has actually been not the worst, though it is the worst. I don't know if I will ever see a worse affix combo as a healer in this game, period. Whoever invented Spiteful should be fired. And I'm not even hy hyperbolizing. I am actually, obviously I don't want people fired, but um, it is the worst because, I mean, the poor melee are going to likely get smacked once or twice because, you know, if they if they are play too cautiously and they get out before things die, then they're losing a lot of time on target. And if they uh, don't play cautiously enough, they are getting smacked, which is itself already a problem. But since it's grievous, it's even more a problem because everything will be going just fine in the pull and then suddenly a melee smack down to 30% and grievous. Um, and then Fortified obviously has its own issues. And then this is also the first time that people are seeing Spiteful. So I've noticed uh, particularly there's a few danger spots where the tanks just haven't really thought through what Spiteful truly means in the sense that like, for example, in Halls of Atonement, where you drop down on the left after the first shard on the left, which is usually the second shard you kill, and it has typically been the case that people will carefully drop down, kill the pack of dogs on Fortified Week, and they might pull the little groundskeepers along with it on non-Fortified Weeks, but um, you can't really do that safely this week on any decently high key, because... Um, there's nowhere to run for Spiteful, and also you'll almost always spawn a Prideful on that pack as well, so it just gets really messy. But I've had, like, tanks kill keys by dropping down and then screaming at people when they, uh, when they inevitably face pull because they're trying to not be killed by Spitefuls, and it's just gone to shit. So I've had some rough keys, but I've also had some perfectly good keys and some, some great groups. Uh, my current score is 940. My gear luck has not been good. I've had a, a 207, I think, main hand sitting in my bags for over a week now. Um, with, uh, but I don't have an offhand for it. So I've been using a really badly statted 187 two-hander because that's all I've got. I've been running Halls of Atonement and Sanguine Depths and all sorts of stuff that have an offhand. And then also a lot of things that just have a new, a better two-hander in hopes of getting something, anything, because it's my worst piece of gear by far. But that's been, um, not, I have not had loot luck in the way that I, well, I have. I've gotten other pieces. Got a pretty decent soul letting ruby this week, I think. Uh, and in one of the Halls of Atonement runs, the one that I literally just finished, um, I got the Sin Stained Pendant, which wasn't an item level upgrade, but it went from the worst statted piece I could have to the best stats. Uh, so that was good. Um, yeah, this week is just terrible affixes, but still doable, but terrible affixes, especially, um, I don't know, I, I, I just feel like I don't have enough throughput to get people quickly out of Grievous without popping big cooldowns, but luckily, so I switched over to using Incarnation Tree of Life. Um, actually just switch over to that this evening and it's really been helping because between Trank, Tree of Life, and, um, Convoke. I usually have, I can have a cooldown for every Prideful as well as, um, basically most, you know, any, any, t I can't have one for every pull like you used to be able to do as a Holy Paladin. You can either have Holy Avenger or Wings on basically every pull, but I can have it for virtually every pi Prideful and most, uh, most pain packs in the various dungeons. So that's been going okay. Um, so that's where I'm at. However, my key situation this week has been um, kind of a weird overall thing. So um, as I've mentioned, the reason that I server transferred to this particular server was I was essentially following a friend of mine who wanted to do keys. And I think that she, well, I, I know because she's told me, she's become frustrated. She typically plays an outlaw rogue. Well, she, she's she been maining an outlaw rogue this expansion. She's the kind of person who will switch around to whatever class and spec is needed to, to perform well. So she had been doing outlaw rogue um, because it does bring a lot of utility that's very helpful, even if it's not necessarily top DPS. But um, we'd been getting these runs that we just have terrible, terrible tanks. Like, the... 
they may be terrible in a variety of different ways, but like I mentioned, you know, just things like having a bad route and then yelling at people for having a bad route and stuff. At this point in time, you know, mad respect to people who are tanking high keys at this point in time because it has to be stressful because since everyone's, you know, relatively low geared, you really, really need to be on top of your kiting game. Um, people are, and you also have to have really great routes for prideful and, you know, it is, it's always, more has always relied on the tank than on other people in dungeons, but I feel like, you know, at this stage of the expansion, and particularly on Affix, it's like fortified, it's always, you know, it's even worse. So, you know, kudos to the tanks, I'm not trying to, to rag on them for being bad, it's just... You know, there's a the, the difference between a good DPS and a bad DPS is not nearly so great as the difference between a good DPS, a good tank, and a bad tank as far as timing keys. And my friend has become frustrated that you know, no matter how good she plays, um, all it takes is a bad tank to kill a key. And like I said, she's willing to play whatever it takes. So she decided. So she didn't really want to run Mythic Plus this week, which kind of put a wrench in my Mythic Plus game. I'm more than happy to pug by myself, and that's what I ended up doing, but I was just like, should I wait for my friend? I don't know. And so, um, and she ended up power leveling through Threads of Fate with me. I So she was leveling a Vengeance Demon Hunter, because she's like, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to main switch, but I want to be ready in case this frustration causes me to main switch. And since she was going to level through Threads of Fate, and I wanted to have it I wanted to try out Shaman, I and uh, level boosts are on sale right now. It seemed like a perfect time to boost a Shaman on Area 52. So enter Swizzle Sticks, my Fox Shaman. Uh, we leveled through Threads of Fate over the course of a few days, so we're level 60 now. And then we, kind of, I don't want to say we abandoned them, we've each done little bits and bobs here and there, like Mythic Zeros, and I think she, I think she's been, might have done a little bit of the Maw, not sure. But, um... Like, we're not main switching or anything at this point, but we do now each have a level 60 alt um, on Area 52, a tank and a healer, uh, respectively. And so that's where a lot of my playtime has gone, and it was only really tonight that I kind of got back into doing keys. I got a little bit frustrated myself, um, not about tanks in particular, but just getting frustrated with people in my MMO. Ugh people in my MMO. <laughs> um, but uh, I kind of, I decided to readjust, have a more positive outlook on my gaming, you know, time and say, if I don't, you know, if it doesn't sound fun, I'm not going to do it. If I'm not having fun, I'm going to leave, you know, obviously I'm not going to leave in the middle of someone's key, but um, that kind of stuff. So that is just a, a shift of mindset has helped me uh, get back into keys just today. And they've gone pretty well. I think I've timed every key I started except for uh, a, an other side that I got into. I apped to a 12 other side. We started the polls. Everything was going fine. And then one of the hunters just drops. It doesn't say anything, just drops. And we're all like, what the fuck? And as we're running out, I, you know, I, I'm typing in, I'll do the 11 if you want. And then I look up and we're on an 11. Uh, and so it had been falsely advertised as a 12. Everyone else was like, yeah, I thought this was a 12 too. And the guy didn't, he, you know, he wasn't trying to pull a bait and switch. He apologized profusely for the miscommunication. But that's probably why the hunter originally left, we figure. And that's the only one I think I haven't timed today. So that's good. Um, I've become much more choosy with my groups. That's another thing as far as my mindset of... Um, Nowadays, I choose groups in this way. So I use a uh, pre-made groups filter so I can filter it in a lot of different ways. And I will only apply to dungeons if they are IO score, like if they would give me Raider IO score, if they drop a weapon or an offhand, because that's what I need, of course, like a two-handed weapon or an offhand. And if the tank, if it already has a tank that has a good IO score, because that usually indicates that they have a route that they actually understand the route and what to do. So uh, as a result, I mean, there's it's not like I can only app to one group of an hour. There's quite a bit out there that falls under that umbrella. So that's what I've been doing. And so I've been having a lot more luck with my groups uh, and a lot less frustration, which has been great. Uh, so that's my life in Mythic Plus. My, uh, my current goal I think last time, was it last time that I said that I was trying to get all my 10s and I was like missing three dungeons or, yeah, I think so. Maybe that was the time before. Anyways, right after I finished whatever recording I said that in, I did get like the rest of them. 
So I do have all my tens done, of course. Um, so now that I, my intent is to try to get, there's this weird cutoff where people want, you know, your if you have an IO score over a thousand, your score turns like pink. And it seems like a lot of people, you know, if they, if you have that pink score, they'll invite you. If you don't have that pink score, get the hell out. And so I'm trying for that pink score slowly, but surely trying to get that rank up. So, um, so I've been, so my new goal is to get everything at a 12. I'm, I only need like two, I need the other side, which is why I adapt to that group. I need the other side, necrotic wake. And I think that might be it actually. And then I'll have everything at a 12 and then I'll try to get everything at a 13 and so on and so forth. Um, so that's my Mythic Plus stuff. Let's talk about the big news, right? Um, I, I, the, actually, you know what, never mind. I'm going to do an opinion piece in a day or two about this, like a separate video. I want to talk about my opinions and feelings about charging for add-ons, because of course, uh, in case anyone hasn't heard, Mythic Dungeon Tools, made by Nagi, um, has recently been put behind a paywall because he had a tantrum in his stream. Um, and I, I have mixed feelings about it. Uh, and I, I, and also what this might mean for other things that also somewhat toe the line for, um, paying for add-on features, things like that. So I think that actually deserves its own video. So I will probably do a video on that maybe, uh, tomorrow or the next day. We will see. I'm also kind of waiting to see if Blizzard has any response to this drama uh, and see where they come down on the issue, uh, since that might also be interesting to talk about with regard to uh, the opinion piece. So gold, 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 gold making. Um, I am on Argent Dawn. I had been approaching 1.1. 1. 1, so whenever I talk about my Argent Dawn gold, I have 10 million gold sitting in a guild bank that I don't consider, like, I don't touch that. That's my rainy day fund. That's my nest egg. So whenever I talk about how much gold I have on, on Irish and Dawn, just add 10 million to whatever I'm talking about. Because I don't, you know, it's like, that gold is there. No one, I just, I don't consider it part of my income. So on top of that, I, I was approaching 1.1 million after the massive hemorrhaging of gold. Um, but then I just then I boosted swizzle sticks using gold, so um, that brought me down a little ways again. So I'm and then I had to make that back. Mounts have been selling pretty well. It looks like uh, you know missives have slowed down for sure, which which is understandable. People have already crafted. <clears throat> pardon me, they've crafted the base legendary, so now they're just paying for the uh, the blanks. And also, if you guys don't already go to the WoW economy subreddit, it's just just like it's spelled wow economy. Um, there was a guy who did a post. I think he, I forget the number exactly, but I think he said he made like 174 million gold in selling in the legendary market. And it, it's a really interesting read. I recommend it. Um, I will, if I remember to, I will put a link to the link to it in the comments below if you want to check that out as yourself. But I, of course, I'm, I'm not in the blanks at all. You have to be level 60 to even access the blanks. And I really do not like the legendary crafting system, this expansion. I think it's prohibitively expensive. And that's honestly what the guy basically is like. He's like, you need to have multiple, you know, you need to be mul gold capped multiple times over to be able to manage to make this type of gold because of the nature of the, of the legendary crafting market. So I'm not intending to ever get in on that. But because everyone had already crafted their rank one, which is when you need the missives, they slowed down. However, as people who have been keeping up with their legendaries know, <coughs> pardon me, I believe that this week we crafted rank four. Is that right? If not, then we crafted rank three. Anyways, it occurs to me that there's going to be this kind of uh, cyclical nature to missive sales in that, you know, once everyone's able to you know, they craft their rank one, so there's going to be a lot of missive sales. And then for three weeks, there won't be a lot of missive sales because they've already got one. And then the next week, when they're able to craft a new legendary, um, because they've already maxed out the last one they crafted, then there should be a rush on missives again. So it'll be interesting to have kind of a, um, a, a, I always kind of think of it like, like the market's like breathing an inhale and an exhale. There'll be ebb and flow in the demand for that for sure <clears throat> let's see here so miss missives have calmed down jewel crafting has actually been remained a really good market for me um the i don't 
craft I don't really get a lot of sales on the gems themselves like cut gems but I sell tons of rings and necks like the the ones that you the green quality ones that you can make and the blue quality ones um, I sell a lot of those on both servers enchanting and to a lesser extent alchemy but especially enchanting has really gone down the toilet which is understandable considering now that eternal crystals aren't nearly as gated there's a lot more people who are able to compete in the market and those people are the types of people who are going to say i got this eternal crystal out of the mythic that i ran and therefore it's free so i'll just undercut by a ton uh, so enchanting has not been quite what I would like. I'm still getting a little bit off of the um, materials to like the the materials used to craft craft the blanks, so the enchanted lithium bars and things of that nature. Uh, but even those, the margins have gone down gone down significantly because with all those cheap eternal crystals, comes more people able to compete in that market. Additionally, the leather workers have caught on to the idea that callous hide is very in demand, so uh, that's getting more and more expensive as time goes on. Um, I craft all of the like the one le the item level one fifty one stuff that you can equip right after you hit sixty, in order to boost your item level. That has always been a really good market for me. Those crafted stuff that people can use to boost their alts. Um, t cloth has, on neither server, have, has cloth actually been a good uh, money maker for me as far as that armor type. I make a lot in leatherworking and a little bit less in blacksmithing. Blacksmithing is really so far more about the weapons, which makes sense because, I mean, they're the only ones who can really make them other than, like, the weird stuff like the bow and the offhand. But, um, leatherworking in particular uh, can make a lot of, uh, a lot of things. And I think that that might actually reflect... I mean, how classes are doing. The resto shamans are definitely having their moment in the sun, which is why Swizzle Sticks was created. And then Vengeance Demon Hunters are all the rage in in Mythic Plus. I don't know how they're doing in Raid, but so that uh, might be why they're why leatherworking is doing so well. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to think of if there's anything else gold making specific. Uh, jewel crafting, tailoring. Blacksmithing. Okay, said weapons. Alchemy's doing okay. I feel like the herbs should start going down in price more than they have, but I guess the fact that uh, now that I think about it, I wonder if they're going to spike in price next week when we need more, uh, we need to mill a lot more to make more missives. So I might need to stock up on that tonight uh, while they're still relatively cheap. Area 52 has a like the, the meat mark, I, from what I understand, there's some sort of meat farming spot that's super OP. I'm not a farmer, so I don't know. But meat has, like there was meat that I was steadily paying 75 gold a piece for. And then in the past week, it's now under a gold a piece. So something tanked the meat market. Uh, so as a result, the cooking market for the most part has tanked. Oh, but this is the first week I've been able to craft the highest quality feast. In fact, this is the first day I've been able to do so. So I have a, I crafted up 20 of the best feasts and put them on the auction house on Area 52. We'll see if those sell. I haven't actually checked yet, but I bet they do. Um, though at the same time, I've always, whenever it comes to feasts, I've always kind of thought, that the people who, you know, raids that need, that are going to use the the expensive feasts probably are making their own expensive feasts. But I've also had, you know, Mythic Plus groups drop a feast at the beginning as well. So it's like, yeah, there might be individual demand for that. So we'll see how that goes. Considering anything sells on Area 52 eventually, and usually pretty quick, I have a feeling it will have sold. Um, talked about how enchanting tanked. Alchemy, enchanting, engineering. I still haven't really been able to make much using new stuff, but I keep doing my yards, peculiar energy source, and selling sky golems. I have, I think, five engineers on Argent Dawn now making that, so I can make more than a little bit more than one mount a week, and that's about how fast I sell them, I would say. Um, let's see here. Engineering. I think that that's basically it. Like I said, tailoring's terrible. Inscription, I mean, glyphs always continue to sell. And like I said, missives are, they still sell. They just don't sell like they had, but they should see their, they should see a return to extreme demand here when we can still, once everyone's crafted their rank four and it's time to start crafting. 
another rank one. I'm pretty excited to craft my next rank one. I think I mentioned in the other video I'm going to do the double life bloom one, so it'll be nice to have that option as well. Um, though I have been considering there is a a balance legendary that's pretty nice. What I really need to do is get a Stone Legion general kill um, and craft the Circle of Life and Death. Because that one has, you know, that one will work really well for Moonkin as well, which is the spec that I do, you know, World Quest and Maw and Torghast in. So, uh, Torghast has been pretty, pretty good since the nerfs for me, though uh, that doesn't mean that I want to go do nine rounds of it on Swizzle Sticks. They really need to introduce a way that characters who have cleared every, um, every every ta I don't know what they're called wings every wing of Torghast on level eight their alts can just start at rank eight instead of having to like climb the tower because it's absolutely awful to have to do that much Torghast but that's the nature of how it works right now so I hope you guys all had a really good Christmas Oh, I forgot I should go open all my presents to see if I can get the Winter's Chill. I think that's where that enchantment uh, look comes from. Uh, I'll have to double check. I feel like it was tied to this holiday somehow. So I'll check it out. I hope you guys got good IRL presents. I hope you guys are staying safe and warm. And I hope you guys have a good... Uh, I think this is my last one until the new year, new year. Yep. So I hope you guys have a good New Year's as well. Have a great day all. And look forward to, of course, my opinion piece on, um, on the 4Pay add-ons.